Like the apostles, we are sent out to preach the good news. And yet, proclaiming the good news to all the nations is not an easy task because we'll be met with oppositions, ridicule, and even violence. Opposition against the church is nothing new. And throughout the history of the church, somehow the church would always be persecuted, sometimes from within, sometimes from without. And it is strange because the gospel that we proclaim is actually for the good of humanity. The church is never against humanity. The church preaches the gospel of love and justice based on truth. The gospel teaches us forgiveness and mercy and compassion. And therefore, it is strange that the world opposes something that is good for humanity, for the world. The church wants to warn the world that if the world becomes overly materialistic, individualistic, if we rely too much on military might, armament, then we will destroy the whole of humanity. So the church wishes good for all, and yet we will be persecuted because the world does not know Jesus. In fact, in the Gospel of John, Jesus said, if the world hates you, it is because the world hates me first. And so as disciples of Jesus, do not ever think that our message will always be received happily by people in the world. Only those who seek truth and justice will welcome the gospel, but not those who seek falsehood, power, and those who are greedy for wealth. They will not appreciate the gospel. And surprisingly, the real opposition actually is not from without. It is from within. Opposition comes first and foremost from the church herself. This is scandalous, but this is real. Today we have many good priests, good bishops, good lay leaders, good lay people seeking for the renewal of the church. Because the church needs to go through renewal. Conversion must begin from those in the uppermost of the hierarchy and down to the ordinary Catholic. But when we speak of conversion, it is difficult to convert those who are leaders because they are so fixed in their ways, so used to the traditions that they have been born with, that they, they have inherited. And therefore, to tell leaders to change, many feel threatened. And yet this is what is most needed in the church today from domination and control to one of collaboration and humble service, from being dogmatic about truth to one of pastoral commitment, from one of legalism to one of love. Trying to convert the church is really going against the grain. But still, we need to. There is no choice. Otherwise, the church should be outdated. The church should become irrelevant. Persecution comes not only from within the church, but within our own families. Those of us who come from non-Catholic families, if you know the price of their conversion stories, those of us who are greater Catholics will put us to shame. Converts pay a high price for their faith. Sometimes they are 
disowned by their family, disowned by their community, because they profess faith in Jesus. In fact, even in the church today, within our own families, when we stand up for the values of the gospel, we are also persecuted. Those of you who are parents, if you don't agree with your children's lifestyle, you will be ostracized. They won't talk to you. They won't come back home to see you anymore. And so you have to keep silent. You have to approve, at least implicitly. Otherwise, they will cut you off. A lot of pressure within the family itself, trying to be faithful to the gospel values that we preach. But that is again the reality of what the Lord asking of us to stand firm in our faith. Never easy. Never. But persecution is only from within, it's also from without. Christianity has always been persecuted by the state, by the world. In some countries, the state is very frightened of Christianity. But actually, it should not be. Unless the government is corrupt, unjust, there is nothing to fear. We will support the government in helping to build the country. We are partners. We are not competitors. We will serve humbly for the good of the nation. Because we too seek justice, compassionate society. But you know, in the early church, this was the case. And so a lot of false rumors were spread against Christianity. For the first 300 years, Christianity was a criminalized religion. They were saying that Christians were cannibals because of the Eucharist they celebrated. Christians were considered immoral because we preached agape love. Christians were accused of being least loyal to the state because Christians were not supposed to worship the emperor. Christians were considered creating disorder in society because the Christians were against slavery. We are trying to promote true love, but the world wants us to promote promiscuity, the entertainment wants to stress on sensualism. And so when the church is against all these things, we are obstacles to them making profits. Their businesses are affected. That's why they don't like the church. And so they discredit the church, expose all the scandals, use the mass media to put down the church. My dear brothers and sisters, in the face of all this, what do we do? Again, Jesus said, don't retaliate. If they persecute you, take refuge somewhere else. The gospel has to be preached. We must be as wise as Jesus said, you know, as a serpent, be harmless as doves. It is only when we continue to stand firm in our faith that eventually the gospel will be proclaimed and one day they'll be enlightened in truth and in love.